let's <clears throat> let's address some dolls. Although this first one actually I um I recently shared some new doll sewing patterns that I put together and one of them was a fairly close fitting shirt meant for the 2016 original body. I don't know if you see me doing air quotes and putting the little sneer in my voice because it's the body that was designed in 2016. It is not anywhere near the original Barbie body. As such, its waist is a lot thicker than even the belly button body was and definitely thicker than the twist and turn and the original 1959 body. Anyway, so I wanted to make a somewhat close fitting shirt for this body for the pattern to share. So it took me a few iterations of trying out my pattern and adjusting things going back and forth. But the first version of it I made, the waist was way too small for a modern Barbie body. But I realized that it actually was just perfect on a gymnast Barbie body. So I thought I would, it's this shirt, I thought I would put it on a gymnast Barbie body doll. I actually don't have many dolls with the gymnast Barbie body, and the two most prominent I have, I changed their clothes recently, so I actually don't want to change their clothes again. And then the other one that I can remember that I have has a painted body, and I really don't like to handle it a lot. So I dug into my parts box, the box of heads and the box of bodies, and I put together this doll, clunk. And so I am going to find an outfit for her. This is a fairly recent, well, one of the earlier wave of fashionistas heads, so it's no glue at least. And I don't know whose body this was originally. Someone gave it to me. It has the ballerina hands and black nail polish. And the original neck just had crumbled at the top because these older barber necks have that. So I grafted on another neck and it's actually not, I haven't sanded it terribly well, but she looks fine. So <laughs> I'm going to build an outfit for her on this. And then I have two other dolls, one of whom I've wanted to change her clothes for a while and one I just pulled out at random because I wanted there to be three dolls in this video because the way I usually do that, that is still going to be about an hour's worth of content of babbling for you to listen to in the background while you do your own doll stuff. This is a polyester blend fabric, so every time I put it on a doll, another thread comes out from the unfinished seams inside. I mean, not only was this a little small for modern bodies, I also when I edited the pattern for the iterations, I made the neckline a little lower and larger because if this was a real person, this would be a super uncomfortably tight neckline. And I'm always amused when the camera picks up the doll face. And I know I mention that in every video because it does always amuse me. Anyway, okay. So that's how the shirt fits. I mean, it fits the gymnast body like it was made for it which it wasn't. This is just coincidence. It's my philosophy why you need to have a lot of different kinds of dolls because if you do, then no matter what you have, whether it's an odd piece of clothing or a shoe or a hat or whatever, you will have somebody that fits. So my hunch was correct. It's not a loose thread. And this fits this body. However, the other thing about the gymnast body, the waist is so small that I don't really have, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to put with this physically. I mean, not just coordinating with her hair color and the aesthetics of the collared, no button up, button up style shirt. Like, this is the other pattern I released at the same time as for these white leg pants. And I can't just put the pants on with this shirt because, again, the pants were intended for the modern original body and my actual first few go-arounds with the pants they were too big so these pants are absolutely enormous on the gymnast party Barbie body so I'm not gonna do that probably be best off with things that have elastic waistbands I don't know how many of those I have either because I tend to avoid elastic waistbands because they can get really bulky really fast. 
well depending how they do it. Like this one I just folded over and stitched zigzagged through the elastic. So it's not that bulky, but I'm not sure if that's going to be a valid look. Probably not going to go with pants. Although, blazer shorts are always fun. So let's see what skirts we have. Like, I guess, I don't know, maybe we could go with one of these sort of pencil skirts, sheath skirts. This is another pattern I showed. I guess, I don't know if I can put a link below or at least, I share all of my doll sewing patterns on various social media platforms, but I also put them on my blog spot website, um, blog. It's so I am, S E W I A M dot blogspot.com, and I will have that on the screen and down in the description. So if you go there and check the doll patterns tag, you can find all the patterns I've shared for the last... <laughs> I think my earliest doll pattern I shared was in 2009. So there's like 25 or 26 patterns from over the years. And this pattern, this, this I think is a little shorter perhaps than the pattern I shared because I was working on charm squares, which are four and a half inch squares that are ready cut for making quilts, patchwork. Anyway, I could go with this. Technically, it's a little big at the waistline and you could pull it pretty far down or you could have it just up and making her look a little bulkier, which I am all for making super thin doll bodies look bulkier. I'm not sure if this is a look I want. And I have actually quite a few skirts I've made with that pattern. This is one of those patterns that I think a beginner might look at and see that it's lined and think that makes it harder, but trust me, in this case I included the lining because that makes it easier. It makes it so much easier to finish all the edges. You don't have to turn it over and fold it, you just turn it inside out once you've sewn the pieces together. I understand that not all of the patterns that I share are beginner friendly, but I try to make them so that if you want to push your, or increase your knowledge of doll stuff, if you are a beginner of doll sewing, they might help. I'm always, always trying to struggle between making my instructions way too detailed versus fitting them all on a page. So, I know the fact that I've been sewing doll clothes for so long means that I might not be the best judge of what is or is not an easy doll pattern. Okay, this is an old one that I did before I released these. But... And I accidentally made this way too small for modern Barbie bodies, but... It's from um, James Gurney, the guy who illustrated Dinotopia, also did a series of dinosaur postage stamps for the U.S. Post Office, and that got licensed onto fabric to make these, like, soft books. <laughs> and I got some of that at, I got that yardage fabric that no one had actually made the books out of, but I think it was still miscut from the thrift store and just turned it into a bunch of doll clothes. And while I do like the dinosaur stuff, I, this is just a very thin silhouette. I like it to have bulk on top and thin on the bottom, or slim on the bottom, and bulk, or slim on top and bulky on the bottom. And this isn't doing it. Oh, I guess I could put a jacket on. This is a super simple skirt that I made. Just stretch the elastic out. 
as far as it will go and zigzag a rectangle of fabric to it. is an aggressively stretched elastic. I know I don't like that because look how it just emphasizes how the waist is engineered. It's not small to be small, it's small so it can move. probably won't go with a sheath skirt with this shirt because the shirt is so slim. You saw the pants. Actually, I had the idea to make the pants pattern first, and I was almost finished with the pants pattern. I thought, you know what, I want to make a really skinny, slim shirt to go with it. And I did, because I wanted the wide pants to have a slim shirt. And if, if the pants I made actually fit this body, I probably would have just gone with those pink pants that I showed you first were way too big, and I'd probably be, well, it's me, I probably would not be almost done by now, but I'd be farther along than this. I believe this is some of the cloth that Susan sent when I was doing my regular weekly YouTube videos. And I just really love that print. So you know what? I think I'm going to go with this skirt just for that print. Now it may not thematically go with the shirt very well, but I might put a cardigan on over that. Because I do have a lot of dull cardigans. I could go with this ridiculous jacket that I made. I actually made myself a jacket out of this same fabric. This is not exactly the same spirit as a big bulky cardigan, but it is bulky. I have not shared this pattern because I actually did not create this pattern. This is one of the patterns for doll clothes I derived back in the late 90s by scanning the piece guides in an actual pattern for a jacket like this and then enlarging those pattern piece guides to doll size. Although I did mess around with a little bit after that. That's fun. I, have, I believe I've had this skirt on a doll with a sequin shirt before. So maybe that's not so original. It's more gray than blue, but it would be getting kind of into the extra Halloween spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Can't tell if those are grays or blues. Although it's for um, Blythe size. Was this for Blythe size? The sleeves are a little short for Barbie. But I actually think between the hair and a little bit of blue-gray in the knit, I'm going to try that. I'm also hoping this doesn't take me like 20-30 minutes at all like it usually does, but let's see. These are Barbie socks from like 1980s. The Animal Love and Barbie outfit sold separately that I have kept forever. And I used to use them as actual socks, but the metallic stuff started coming out, and somehow I just decided to keep them to use to put over hands so I can put knits on the bodies without the hands snagging everything. I somehow tend to manage to lose one or the other of those every once in a while. Alright, can we do these? 
shove the sleeve up so it looks intentionally that works. I think the blue-gray in the knit, heathered part of the knit, is close enough to the gray-blue of the skirt. Alright, let's see if it can come on our hair any. I do love the, this doll's hair color. I just wish it wasn't distributed like this. I wish the pink were easier to see normally. I got this head from this doll from a local doll person who also makes jewelry. So the person that actually pierced her ears. I mean that's not just shoved into the head like most Barbie earrings. These are actually French hooked through her earlobe. And I kind of forget about them because they get lost in the hair, but they are kind of a muted purple color that works with this cardigan. So maybe I'll put her hair up after all. Just not sure. I want to put up a simple elaborate so you can see. And I know I still need to deal with her shoes and possible hosiery. Now this head is a little loose on this body. Or do I just put it back as a ponytail? I really don't know what I'm doing with doll hair. I always just mess around with it until I get something that's kind of doing a vague shape that I want. In the 90s, I would sometimes super glue the doll's hair in place. That was when, I don't know if it was actually trendy, but I liked doing doll hair so you take it from like from the center part and wrap it around the back and then pull the other hair down over it. Which I actually, <laughs> when I was really little in the late 70s, I saw some cool teenage girls in late 70s, maybe 1980. I saw some cool teenage girls in a McDonald's once and one of them had her hair. I understood later, I eventually realized her hair was just pushed behind her ear, and then her other hair was hanging over it. But I just, for some reason, I thought that was the coolest thing when I was little and tiny. Okay, this is a kind of heavy, heavier elastic. I also, um, when I do doll hair, I tend to be lazy and try to do as much of it as possible with a single elastic, even when it's split into two parts. But again, I acknowledge I'm not great with doll hair. I just kind of get it going where I want it. And I had been thinking I would be trying to do two sides of this with a single elastic, but maybe not. Do I have another one as thick as that one? I might not. What do you like? I think I do, but I can't get it. I can't see it, but I can't reach it. I'm trying to do stuff fast, I'm not getting it correct. Tools. Or if 
finishing my thought. Alright, I thought I saw a thicker one here, but I guess not. Alright, now well, let's see if I can even come anywhere near getting the other side of her hair. one thicker one. I was just going to kind of use it to wrangle the rest of the hair together. Come on. Okay, we'll go with these two messy buns. I mean, it's possible I might um, fix them before photographs. Alright, I'm curious to see if that will show up on the recording. They are expanding our subdivision and they are doing some heavy duty blasting. And that was just a big explosion. Alright, so yeah, hosiery. And shoes. I, the reason I picked this body is because it does have the high heel feet, unlike most gymnast bodies that have the flat feet. And there are a little more possibilities of shoes for flat feet these days, but the high heel feet are just so much easier. going to stay buttoned, some of the cardigans do, some don't. Oh, that's losing the collar. No, that's fine. All right. Let's see. All right, so that's a possibility of gray socks. did not make these. They were given to me by the same person who came out of life cardigans. Thank you. Um, not quite. I don't think I have anything like grayish. White. I mean, she is wearing a lot of white. So, sometimes when I'm trying to dress dolls, I probably talked about this before, I try to choose things that are not my first choice. Because I feel like if I make everything default to me, then yes, it will all definitely be my style, but it might get a little repetitive and monotonous. So, these white lace tights are definitely not my first choice, but I think I am going to go with them. So 
can choose. issue with them is, as a short person, I like my dolls to at least believably, possibly be short. I'm not fond of tall dolls. So sometimes a super tall boot is fun, and sometimes it just becomes too tall. That is a problem with using tights, is they do make everything thicker. Of course, they have these vintage knockoff clone boots that do fit on the hard plastic legs pretty well. originally been thinking boots, but I think I'm going to go with the very 90s. Mary Jane. Fake platform. They're fake platform because I'm pretty sure the toe of the doll foot goes ahead down into the sole of the shoe. a lot of shoes. The first time I saw that in the 90s was with Spice Girls shoes, the dolls, but then Mattel started doing that too, so where they can make a platform heel for dolls that wouldn't make the dolls super tall, because the toes is the shoe. Alright, and I'm going to put on at least one white bracelet to give her some more white, since there's so much white everywhere else. I don't know how many white bracelets I have available because I have a lot of dolls wearing white bracelets. This is not a doll bracelet. This is like the core of a um, dental floss dispenser that I cut a slit into with plastic cutters, sprue cutters, so I can put it on doll arms. So her hair and shoes are very 1990s, but her witchy skirt is very not. Reproduction vintage Barbies. I mean, the, <laughs> the glasses themselves are vintage now because they were reproduced like nearly 30 years ago. But these are reproduction of vintage Barbie sunglasses. It just brings some blue back elsewhere into the outfit, but I can't get them to stay on her ears. They want to go into the middle of her ears. I think I could give her this, but the limitation of the hands without having wrists. She's always going to be dumping it out, so maybe not. Alright, so I think I'm going to dip into the purse bag. Let's see what we got. How long has that been? Oh, that's been a half an hour. Yeah, I thought I was doing that fast. I was hoping for a white purse. I 
one of these bags that Cosmo made. He has a little hanging loop on it, and I actually had put a charm on it. That's the dark blue one, which I don't see in here, so somebody's probably still creating that. Or I took the charm off and threw it away. Not what I was looking for. This one doesn't have a hanging loop. But you know what I could do, because this is taking a long time, is have my stickers. Do I have the thinking the ends of my sentences, I'm just not, you know, saying them. silent and this has been good company for you. I always worry that I am mumbling and muttering way too much to actually make these videos useful for keeping you company. Well, you do your own craft things, dull things, art things, whatever. into her hand in a convincing way. I mean, it's a tablet, not a phone, anyway. Alright. I'm going to say she's... She's obviously very busy. She has nothing to say to me. Alright. Now, the doll that I wanted to change her clothes for a while is this rerouted Francie head on a Liv Danielle body. It's the only dark Liv body. It's not a great match for this head. Someday I will hopefully get a better body for this head. I don't like putting Francie heads on full-size Barbie bodies because I think Francie needs a smaller body, but I also don't like putting Francie head on the petite made to move one because I want Tanika gets to keep her head but also because um, aesthetically I don't like the maiden move body. I mean, I'm not too fond of the live body either, but I think the aesthetics work a little better for Francie in that it's a little more old-fashioned. Now, the theme of this outfit that the Francie is currently wearing is that I didn't make any of it. Although I did make this bag I'm trying to get off of her wrist. I did make this from some of the um, mystery part of the packaging that the only OMG, LOL OMG I've ever bought knew had in her packaging. And as soon as I realized it was like fake Tyvek, I realized, oh, I can sew this. Back into the bag. Alright, so I'm just trying to get all the accessories off of her. Because she is Francie, she got all of the accessories.
Here, I actually moved the um, rhinestone sticker pages over to my rhinestones because I was using them to build up things to make molds of to cast in resin, which is still super experimental for me. So I no longer have the proper page to put these back on, but this should work. I mean, I don't know how sticky they are anymore. They're probably covered with fuzz from the sweater. last video I showed you that I still had shoes from a doll that I got when I was like four. It's going to take a long time just to get all these layers of clothes off of this doll. And back into the correct bed. And I already am going to warn you that I have issues getting clothes on the live body that make me happy with the live body. I am probably going to go right to dresses for this, just to try to save some time, even though we both know, well, we all know that I'm not good at saving time for these videos. See, the thing is, for whatever reason, our ISP offers synchronous upload. So yeah, this video might end up being an hour and a half, but I'll get it uploaded in a flash. <laughs> so that's how I can continue to share these super long, pointless videos is because it's not a pain to put them online. All right. Also, the live body is right between the small bodies like Skipper and Blythe and the larger bodies like Barbie size as far as what they can wear. So often that's my biggest hurdle in dressing a live body. It's just figuring out what they'll actually wear at all. This is, I found these at a doll show. I bought these at a doll show for incredibly cheap given how they are obviously hand knit, super fine gauge. I mean, can you see how delicate that is? And probably from the 60s. They're amazing. I just don't know. Because I rooted her hair with a full part, I like to leave her hair in the paws, which I need to recurl and fluff back up. So I don't know if this outfit really fits with the youthfulness of the puffs. This is mostly a dress bag, but I do keep like coordinates in there that should always be worn together. I made this ages ago, but it does kind of go for the whole silky romantic look. She doesn't really coordinate with her hot pink hair and bright red lips, but it's a possibility. See, this won't, probably won't work because it's made for an original Barbie size body, which means the bust is going to be way too big. The waist is probably okay because these weren't terribly form-fitting back in the 70s. Oh, that is cute. Do I have a shirt that I can put under it to fill in that space? because that is adorable. And I very humorously realized that she might end up also not wearing things made by me, which you know is pretty unusual. Let's see, this is huge. This. I know I have 70s 
somewhat small lace shirts I have made that can go under there. I'm just not sure if they are available or if they are all being worn. if I made one that's long sleeved. Oh, not that that's small. I have this big boxy long sleeve shirt. This is, I think I did share this pattern. The drop shoulder wide sleeve thing. So this is a pretty big shirt. This is actually, I'm going to try that one. The fun thing about this is the velcro was all the way at the back, so I'll have to take the dress off. And I know that I could always put something in to bulk up the bust if needed, but I don't think that I would do that. I made this in like 2011 to go under a dull dirndl. That was around the time I first discovered landhouse mode style, which is based on traditional German stuff, but then it goes off into fantasy and make believe. And apparently, a lot of people well, not, not necessarily a lot of people, but I wandered into a forum where people were discussing Oktoberfest fashion and a lot of people were just so angry that Landhouse Mode was showing up because it wasn't traditional at all and it was spoiling everything and that made me like it more. Alright, this is a definitely do not look at it from the back kind of thing. But honestly, if I put a bit of a an apron over this, it would be very mock thirndle. I don't remember if I still have the apron that I made for the mop darndles I tried to make in 2009. If I do, I'm not sure if it's in the skirts or not. I mean, you know, we're all about Halloween in October, but I guess Oktoberfest is, you know, in October also. Where did I put it? Like, is it languishing me with the dresses because the dirndls I used to have were kept with the dresses? It's like, I can remember seeing the apron recently, but I cannot remember what bag it was in. And of course, I say I remember seeing it recently, that might have been like five or six years ago. Because that happens when you get old. It was made out of this cloth, this lace trim. It's obviously not the apron. Yeah, there it is. Do it to be funny. I mean, I believe a proper dirndl, the apron, should be about as long as the dirndl skirt. Anyway, this amuses me. Alright, so shoes for this bizarre live body. I don't remember exactly what these um, bows on ribbons came from. I think a lotion bottle or perfume or something. I've had them forever. I'm 
trying to do this so it's in view of the camera, but I don't know if it is, and it's kind of awkward for me, so my biggest fear is that I'll go back and look at this, and you won't be able to tell what I'm doing, and I'll be doing it badly. But I think you're used to a lack of professionalism from me anyway, so it's fine. I don't lack for pink and white things. I mean, can you see what I'm wearing? Although, shoes could still be an issue for the with feet. Well, I don't think the with feet fit into these skipper shoes. Actually, I might. <clears throat> I actually had two pairs of these white shoes that were sold in the 90s as standalone packs for Gymnast Body. That actually fit very strange in the Gymnast Body, but one of the white pairs I painted ivory. And I think. So it is white and ivory, which kind of suits what she's wearing. So hey, there we go. That was faster than I expected. And actually, it took about, I don't know, 15 minutes, I think. I didn't look at when I finished the previous one. All right, so now the weirdness is going to come with this last doll that I picked out, because her body is odd. It is this, it is a 1987 skipper head that I rerouted with multiple hair colors, and it is on a modified Star Darling's body. And you'll see the modifications once I get her stripped. I'm gonna leave her shoes out because they are actually Star Darling's shoes, which means they are going to fit. I like putting skipper heads, 1987 skipper heads, on star darling bodies because the proportions are good, but star darlings have strange feet. Just in the way that all of those post monster high dolls suddenly had very, very high heels that don't fit anybody else's shoes. Definitely have that. All right. Yeah, I think there's elastic. Oh, an actual rubber band holding this up because the elastic on this has been bad for a decade. So the Star Darling body is also thin, which means I'm going to be limited to my skipper size clothes. And the hands do come off. I'm going to go ahead and do that because this shirt is an old action figure shirt that requires removable hands because the cuffs are so Skipper dresses are here, skipper separates go into this lower bag. And I don't know how I'm going to dress this doll, so I don't know what she's going to end up using. Which bag? China. From Jim. I'm going to go ahead and leave her earrings in place. I'm going to go ahead and take her hair down, although I might end up putting it back up. It'll be interesting to see if this elastic stays together or falls apart as I try to take it out of her hair. Actually, it's 
that's your height. Okay, because this one of the bigger elastics looks like it moves back in there and then it slowly regain its original size and shape. I'll leave her earrings in for now. Might have to end up resetting her hair with hot water. I only recently, I don't know if I mentioned, finally got a flea comb for doll hair. It is, I knew it was good for getting doll hair smooth and straightened before you even did anything else that involved heat because that's what Tiffy talked about and Tiffy knows how to fix doll hair. But I was not prepared for how good a flea comb, metal tooth flea comb, is for aligning doll hair. Really, really scruffy doll hair. You can get it super straight. And also what I was doing is I didn't have, um, how did I do it? I don't have a hair iron, which if you get one that has adjustable heat and you're just really low, you can use it to straighten and smooth doll hair. I didn't have it. What I was doing is, I was, what was I doing? I was getting a washcloth wet putting that around the hair, putting a mini, the clover mini iron on it, it's a craft iron, the head's only about that big, and like pulling the damp washcloth down the hair. I did that with a flower princess recently. Flower princesses were dolls I had as a kid, who were my introduction to horrible hair fiber. Anyway, I said this is a modified star darling body. You can see the modifications on the hips, because if you don't cut out that much of the hips, then the doll cannot keep her legs together when she sits. Weird design decision. It isn't that they had to take out, I had to take out some inside the joint and some from the pelvis, but it works now. I don't know why it was designed the way it was. I have probably done my rant about how a lot of toy makers now go for pure aesthetics instead of actually understanding how articulation works. And it's annoying. Oh, this is this is the dress I previously had on that Francie. So I guess, or no, this was actually no. This was on a, this was on a different Francie. This is a dress I had on a Francie. So I guess I think of Francie as being a pink and a lace person doll. I made this in like 2006 or seven. I got, I bought a, somebody had obviously donated a sewing box that was just like, it literally had Corningware Visions. It was a Corningware Visions box with contact paper on the outside, but you can clearly see the Corningware Visions graphics through the contact paper. And it had a bunch of cloth scraps and sewing supplies in it. And one of them was a cloth scrap was this which had been a bigger panel that they had cut a big, the interesting stuff out of the center, but I was still able to get the rest of it turned into this. And I think I'm going to try that on her. I can't use this on Tony dolls because I didn't have things um, down pat back then, and the sleeves are very small, especially with this lace in it. But her lack of hands means that she can wear it. It's actually, it was made for Blythe, so it's actually a little bit big on this body, but I mean it has the pink and green in her hair pretty well, and yes it has yellow and her hair has blue, but you know what, I think I'm going to go with this, and not just because I'm trying to get this done fast. <laughs> I mean I didn't have any expectations with this going in with this doll. So, let's see, so she will some hosiery, maybe, depending on what she used. Now it has been a few years since I've changed this doll's clothes. I could have other shoes that fit her now. Like, um, these are from, as a no, those are way too big. I was wondering if maybe these, um, well, her cushy 
shoes could fit her. No, they are too big. I probably don't have shoes that fit her, but I could. So I might just end up going back with her original shoes. Because again, they will always match the blue in her hair. So there's that. I made these out of a... Um, someone had given me several um, fake tattoo sleeves. You know, Halloween things, they're printed on mesh and you put them on, it looks like you have a sleeve of tattoos. And I made tights out of some of them. These are a little baggy on this body because again, this is a skinny little body. Of course, I could amuse myself and see if this pair of the same kind of lace as I put on the first doll. They shouldn't fit this body. I made these for a Mego body. Yeah, no, they're way too small. I would probably have. Like I have them in a super short size here. But I would actually like to put them on the full body and bulk it up a little bit. Like I said, I like taking very skinny bodies and putting lots of layers on them so they have some heft. Let's see what we'll do then. I need to remake these. I made these like in about 2006 or 7 too, and I still have the cloth and I really need to remake them because the cloth has just fallen apart. But I don't think about it because I have like two pairs of these and I can tell them apart by the lace on the top. I mean they're both kind of worn out down low, but as long as one can chug along When dolls have well-defined toes, they do tend to get caught in all the holes in this fabric. Also, again, this was made for Barbie size feet, and this doll's feet are significantly larger than Barbie size. See, I'm just laughing because this outfit is, like I said, I made, I'm pretty sure, all these parts in 2006 or 2007. So it was just a flashback to how I dressed all like, oh yeah, there's a big hole in this. And I'm actually going to put these on my desk, maybe as a reminder to make better versions of them. Maybe that will work. Probably not. I said I actually want, I do think I want a longer. Time to go with complete contrast. No. <laughs> I made these fairly recently from a zombie knit I got from Joanne years and years ago. I held on to it for a long time because it was cool. I finally made a shirt out of it, but I cannot wear polyester synthetic shirts. They just don't cooperate with my well being. It means I get hot and sweaty. <laughs> so I gave that shirt away, but I did save some of the bits to make the zombie tights. But they are made for Barbies, so they need little Barbie tiny feet. This, I think, will be stretchy enough. And we are getting away from the color scheme of the dress. I 
curling body is not great, even with the edits I made to the hips. I mean, I would love it if I happened to have a pair of um, boots that fit this body. I also have these action figure tights, which you can tell I did not make them because the seams are on the outside of the leg, which is just weird. Again, I don't know if I've just been babbling unintelligibly. Of course, you won't know either because if I have, I won't share this video. Maybe. Boots. I mean, these will fit because the feet are way too big. These are Brett Silla's boots, although actually the heel angle is wrong. Which technically shouldn't be a problem, but it does annoy me. Sometimes you can get away with putting the wrong size shoes on because things get hidden inside other things. But often not. Hmm. Well, that seems to work. These are 1990s Skipper shoes. The 1990s skipper had a slightly larger foot, a lot, a lot larger. Now granted I have had situations where I put a bigger foot than is intended into a shoe and leave it there and the next thing I know, well next thing I know, a few months later I look at it again and the foot has split the shoe apart but those were thinner than this. I think actually, all right it's not the big all boots I was thinking about, but I think actually these work pretty well. So I'm going to put her other shoes in my box of odd size shoes, which is a pretty full box. Anyway. Well, let me try these Creable World boots on her. That is cute, but they are enormous. All right. So, what else can I layer under here? I'm going to leave these earrings in. Or am I? Of course not. I can make it simple. I want. Alright, I know the other one of those is in here somewhere because I almost put them on a doll the other day. storage system, I admit, is not great. I think I might just drop something down into the nether depths of either the wrong bin or into the storage box in general. That's a problem for future me. Alright, I don't think these earrings have polarity. Some Barbie earrings do. I don't think all right. There went the mail. I was supposed to get something today to complete a sewing project, but the shipping has been really weird on it, so I'm not going to run out and check the mail right now because last I checked tracking, it wasn't here yet. It wasn't at, even at our local post office. And see, cobbles. 
I'm a big fan of goggles for outfits. I picked that up from somebody on the action figure forums in the early 2000s. I'm just looking at this for her to hold her hair down. Mm. I feel like that's giving too much emphasis on yellow. Like sore hair earrings, actually. Like, there's yellow on the dress. And yellow on the earrings. I feel like her shoe should be yellow. I don't want to give her yellow shoes. So, do we have... right here. Oh, those actually aren't matched. Okay. I guess I'm just going to dig around whatever I find a pair of first is what wins. As long as I don't like drop these also down in the nether depths of either the wrong bin or the box in general. It's not the same green, these are Barbie and the Rockers. Earrings. Still, Cat ears would definitely take her out of 2007. But the cat ears don't quite fit on this giant 1980s skipper head. You know what? I'm going to give her this green bracelet that Francie was wearing. And this pink bracelet that Francie was wearing, and this yellow watch that Francie was wearing. And like I said, I might fix her hair elsewhere. It has been up for years, and it really probably needs heat to relax. But you know what? I'm gonna call her done. Also, awesome. all right. So right around an hour, and we have. This um, vaguely witchy doll created to wear a shirt, which you can barely see in the finished outfit. Sweet pink Francie, who might be going to Oktoberfest. And 1987 Skipper, whose hair is doing its own thing. in a almost vintage style dress. Let's cover shoes and tights. And all right, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you got the stuff done that you wanted to do and have a great day.